Hello and welcome to the knock on KCLR and Scoreline.ie's weekly rugby podcast. Tom Crotty, Paddy Brown, and James Blanchfield join us, lads. How's it going? Uh, Stephen. All Very good. good, Stephen. Good, good stuff, Stephen. good stuff. Uh, we're well into the season now, thankfully. Uh, uh, Leinster Leagues, all that sort of stuff. The Inter Pros took place as well at the weekend. We're over the World Cup and plenty going on, I suppose, in the in the Interpros and Oli Jaeger's going to Munster and all that sort of stuff as well. That keeps us going, I suppose, too. But there's uh, lots going on in the local pitches as well. Uh, we weren't here last week, a bit of a break last week, but uh, so we're going to have a look back at some of the games that took place at the weekend. We're going to start with you, Paddy, in Division 1, um, losing out to Monkstown. Tell us about the match. OK, well, uh, the it's the same old, same old story. We were beaten 22-32. But there's within that there's a there's a story and the story is that we gave a, yet again gave away a, a reasonably good lead. Uh, we got three tries in the first half. Um, Adam Johnson kicked on a ball and, and put it down himself. A very good breakaway try. Uh, Stevie Smith made a great break then, and Tom Cashin was on hand to touch down uh, a, pro, a real props try. And then Scott O'Sullivan Magna got the third try uh, with a good overlap on the wing. Uh, and Monkstown scored one try in that first half. Adam Johnson also kicked the penalty. So we went in with three tries at half time, 22 8 up. Uh, and it all went downhill from there. A um, couple of factors, maybe, but we're not making any excuses because we lost 22 32. Colin Gorry, our big nace in port, has been playing very well this year, huge giant of a man. So he went off injured in the 42nd minute. And um, he was badly missed in the lineouts and in the in the round of the field as well. He's certainly carrying a lot more ball this year than he did last year, and he was he was very much missed. And the lineout struggled uh, after he, he went. Um, and then Sean O'Brien, who fair play to him, played, but had to go on to the Leinster match in Dublin. So he played up to the up to the fiftieth minute and went off then. And uh, uh, so he was, uh, I suppose, a loss as well. But the two the two people going off like that certainly disrupted the the, the play and uh, the subs played pretty well but you know we 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 let it slip a very very good lead now having said that Monkstown were, were were strong and they came back at us and they're probably always going to come back at us but it is a, a big concern and I was talking to to Morris Logue um, since the match and um, he's 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 very worried about it and both our Kilkenny and Carlo colleagues will remember in the cup last year we had good leads against both of them in the semi-final and final and almost let both games slip uh, by not finishing well. And it's after happening three times this year, happening against Ashburn as well. We were well ahead and Ashburn came back and pipped us. So um, Morris is wondering now, is it, is it a lack of fitness? The, 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 co- the, the training sessions certainly focus an awful lot on ball play and that's great. The players love it. But is, he's wondering, is it a bit at the cost, is it at the cost of, of doing more physical work and training? So I'd say the lads are in for a, a tough old Christmas um, based on, on that, you know. And, you know, the, the pattern is there for, for all to see. So it's a, it's a bit of a concern. So it means there's a couple of matches there that we that we maybe should have won or could have won. And uh, it means we're, we're in fifth place in the league uh, out of eight teams. Um, and the four Dublin teams now ominously are at the top, you know, with the Sea Point, Monkstown, Vective uh, and the Setonians, uh, the top four teams in it. So that brings us to next Sunday where we're, we're playing Setonians. And Setonians had started badly enough, but they're improving. We, we beat them. It, by a big score in, in our very first match away so we have them home now but they have been getting better results recently so uh, tomorrow will be a big test uh, our seconds uh, had a very good win over Monkstown last week they, they won uh, 37-12 so that's a bit of an encouragement that we are uh, with a new young team we're certainly the seconds are performing very well and as I said here before that's good for Tullo because we, we haven't been able to <laughs> Get second teams out early in the season uh, in previous years. I think this Sunday last year was against Carlo. I think was our first t- t- time to get a seconds match out. Um, the, 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 the coming Sunday a year ago. So uh, yeah, that that's that, that's been the story for the for the last few matches. So hopefully we can turn that around tomorrow. Our matches is uh, are early tomorrow because of the Christmas. We're our first our seconds half twelve and. Uh, 
I respect uh, the first at two o'clock, so it's a good early start. And Tom was saying earlier about the pitches possibly being frozen. I don't know if that's a problem with the 3G, but hopefully not. Um, because we'd be playing both the matches on the 3G, uh, I guess. And the women are, are, are home to Barn Hall as well. So that would be... Uh, oh, no, they're, they're away, I think, actually. So uh, that, that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, underage, continued, they continued to perform very well. The 13s, 14s and 15s had good wins. The 18s lost again. Um, the under-16 boys won. Um, the under-14 girls lost to the New Ross. And the under-18s lost heavily to Wexford, the under-18 girls. Uh, so... Um, but overall, Eddie Harkin tells me that nine of our underage teams are either the top of their Leinster League or their Southeast League. So, you know, while there was a couple of losses last weekend, they certainly uh, overall the results underage have been very good. We have a full round of matches uh, over the weekend, over Saturday and Sunday, of, uh, the underage matches, most of which are at home. So it'll be a, a busy weekend in the Black Eights over the over the weekend. So, uh, Stephen, that's that's the story from Tullow. Um, Another another loss and uh, in in fifth place in the table. So uh, we need to start winning a few matches now at this stage, and we need to get fitter. Say get fitter. Does and that's like Paddy. I said it after the cup final last year. After watching the, I actually kind of said fitness to me stood out to be a problem for Tolo in certain parts of the pitch. And I don't want I don't want to disappoint anyone by saying that or piss anyone off. But I actually I think I might have said it to you after the cup final, particularly to Johnny that. You need to have a very serious off season because one A, we were in the same position last year. We were getting leads up on teams, and then the second half, we were just gas, and they were <clears> running <throat> scores up against it. So, like fitness, like one B is an attritional division where one A, it's constant going, 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 and it's a different type of fitness you need up there. Yeah, yeah, I think you're dead right. And uh, as I said, the two matches in the semi final and the final of the cup last year against Carlo and Kilkenny, we we. we but but you're, yeah, you're dead right, James. It's even it's even more obvious this year. The the Dublin teams particularly tend to be young and very fit, and, uh, and they, 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 they're they're all finishing better than we are. Yeah, is the lads coming back off football or anything, Paddy? Not help, you know, coming straight off the season where they should be sort of at full steam. Yeah, well, they're all back now anyway. They're not. We can't use that excuse. The last two Sundays, you know, or the last two Saturdays, we have anyone to back back, you know. And you're right. I mean, they would be reasonably fit to be coming back off uh, uh, for, from training. But no, no, we can't use that excuse at this stage anyway, Stephen. Mm -hmm. There's a... Who, <laughs> who, who's weird who's the groundsman out here in the rugby club? It's He's out to it. check his pitches. James he's like, like, he's, like, he's like the Bull McCabe. It's my field. And <laughs> what's the pitch like? Is there any frost down there, James? There is. There's frost here under the dressing room in the clubhouse. They kind of they they never get sunshine until very late in the day, and sure the sun was so low today, it never yeah. got in over the clubhouse. So, mm -hmm. but there is it is frosty here at the moment now. Yeah, it's going to be a concern for definitely for the weekend. Sure, James, there while while we have you as well, you're in action. Uh, this weekend against Kildara, who Carlo played last week, uh, yeah. but she got the better of Longford, though. Yeah, in fairness to the lads, like they went up, they went up probably with a fair team, and they were all feeling fairly down in themselves after the loss to Carlo. Like even though, like in the Carlo game, we didn't deserve to win it, we got ourselves into a position where we won it, and then we handed it back to Carlo. So, you know, and I mean that we didn't deserve to win it, but the lads. Gave us, they went up to Longford on Sunday with a with a plan and they stuck to the plan. They went behind early on, like we went up with a, with a reasonably strong team. And I think there's been a couple of kind of obvious tactical changes that needed to be made, and uh, particularly at out half and half back. So there was a little bit of a swap around there. Ian Buckley started at nine, and um, Stephen Atkinson went out to ten, and then Jake stayed in the centre. But remains to be seen what's going to happen with Jake this week. Is he going to go to ten or back to twelve? And that kind of gave a little bit more fluidity in the back line. We went in without Gary Dunn. Gary pulled his hamstring against Carlo here, or twinged his hamstring. So he rested himself for last week. He's back fit now for Kildara this coming week. Um, but yeah, look, we went behind early on, but we're always in the game. It was it was a bit of a mad game of rugby, to be honest with you, but it was a good game of rugby. Uh, played on their 3G up there and kind of suppose it probably suited us as well on the 3G. And uh, look at Tristan, or uh, I should say Tristan Leffers, 
our Aussie import went back to full back and the little bit of extra space, like he penetrated line every time he got the ball. So last Sunday. So yeah, look, we got scores um, through Jake McDonald's, Joe Manuel, and probably the score is first senior try, young Donald Keeley, an under 18 hooker, to kind of go three quarters of the length of the pitch to throw a dummy to beat the full back to go in under the post for, for, for Donald was a brilliant try and what a way to get your first score for the first 15 to win you an away match in Longford so look at he'll always remember that but the work that went into scoring that try was kind of happened inside um, I think it was Conan Dunn stripped the prop or stripped there one of their players that went in too high we recycled the ball went on first phase and length of the pitch so look at brilliant Longford then got a score in the last play of the game which gave them a bonus point and a bonus point that they probably need but the disappointment from our point is again is you know we failed to get a bonus point four, four try bonus point on the board and you know as I always say like we lost the Leinster League Division 1 down here in the early 2000s by a bonus point by not getting a bonus point you know along for our Navin won it and there, it, it's such a great incentive so I think we just need to start getting more tries on the board once we get a, a head up of steam to get that on the seconds had their had another great win so they're they're in where I think they're in third place in the league they won or the, yeah they won 24-10 and uh, geez I'd love to be playing seconds again because they're having great crack they're winning matches they're competitive every week um, the big Carlo the week before that, I think, and that was a big win for them because I actually think it was Carlo's first seconds loss of the year. Um, yeah. if I'm right, Tom, so was, that, yeah. that, that was a huge win for them. And I know, Tom, you had said that they were you were going in minus a few players, but our lads were so happy to get that win, you know. So, um, the women are having a tough run of it now at the moment, a very, very tough run of it. They're after losing either four or five on the bounce now, which you know is it's it's concerning in the short term, but in the long term, you know, they're still building and they're still getting players through. But they lost at home to Wheaton Derry now, was it uh, 1910? Um, so they're down to fifth in the league now. So realistically speaking, any ambitions that they have of competing in the top two in that league, either winning the league or getting a playoff place, are probably starting to fade away. So the hope for the women is, is like to have Wanderers away this weekend now in... Um, in, in, in Dublin so the hope would be they can go up there and get a result they beat Wanderers well in the first game of the season so the hope would be that they can go up to Dublin and get a result this week and start getting themselves back onto winning ways coming into the end of the year um, youth rugby is going well to name just a few results uh, the under 14 boys had a really good win away to North Kildare um, and that's a good win for them because they had a bad loss away to Mullingar the week before so kind of there's a star-studded coaching team on that. Um, two of the finest second rows ever to play for the club, Lee Selman and Pat Holden, are coaching that team. So you can bet your bottom dollar the under-14s are built for hardship. Um, then we had the under-14 girls had a really good win under the coaching of first player Joe Manuel. Um, they won 36-10 away to Mullingar, having been 10 points down after, I think, 15 minutes. And Mick McGrath and Barry Daly and the a great coaching cohort there and the under-16 boys Barry Daly, Mick McGrath, Eamon Dooley, um, uh, Tom Murray. They seem to be like uh, a, a cohort of brothers or sisters there, but they had a, a loss on the road to Nace. But as the Beard said, Mick McGrath said, they probably had one eye on, they were all heading up to the Aviva after the match of the Munster game. So, um, you know, I look at a very, a very good Sorry, weekend. Sorry, James, the, the, that's the Leinster match. Yes, that's the Leinster match, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. the Munster where, match. The one, the one where Leinster played Munster, you know the one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's an in joke for any of the listeners. That's an in joke that we have amongst ourselves, you know. <laughs> um, big one, big shout out to everyone who supported the Your Club, Your Country draw. We raised just under 12 grand on the draw, uh, on the sales of the tickets. So, um, kudos to I suppose the Your Club, Your Country committee here in the club, led by Mick O'Donovan. Mick just has an uncanny knack every year of drumming up in a, an unbelievable amount of sales and dragging in people and getting people to buy tickets. And you know what? He deserves immense kudos um, for, for that himself, Ray Pembroke, Vinnie O'Shea and Mick Hannigan. But uh, thanks to everyone who supported that. Um, tough game on the road this weekend now for our firsts. Um, heading up to... Um, 
heading up to North Kil- or, or up to Kildara to take on Kildare, who are top of the league and they're on merit. I know to be um they're they're kind of we beat them the first day out, but they've gone on a really good run of performances since then. So we have to go up there now and 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 get a result to put ourselves kind of I won't say back in the shake up, but some way to propel ourselves back up the table to get up into the top three coming into Christmas. I don't think it'll be a bad way to end the year. Um but you know Tom you've probably seen them more than I have this year. They're a good team. They have a mm-hmm. good pack. They have two very good centres. Um, they're going to take a lot of beating. Yeah, and speaking of which, Tom, you lost him last time as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, our J1s had... Uh, they lost 13-7. Um, or 13-6. 13-6 at the weekend. Uh, yeah, it's a good... A good, a good Kildare side. Um a big improvement on last year. The pack are very good. Um, uh, but, uh, their number eight, John Joe, had a had a cracking game. Very deceptive player, a big man, but is uh, he's he's good feet and uh, he's a good knowledge of the game. Very very cute around the breakdown. Um, you know, if someone tackles him, he'll hold on to them for that little bit. If you watch him in videos and stuff, he'll hold on to it for a little bit longer than he should do, but gets away with it because he's cute and. Um, they um from a from looking at Kildare as a team, they're just they probably strengthened their back line a little bit, which is uh which is the improvement on last year. They're a very direct team. Um they do the they do they play a basic game but they play it very well. Uh from our own point, um we definitely didn't perform well. Um we probably played to about 80%. If you wanted to put it in percent, you probably played to about 80, 70 or 80% of what we could do. Um, maybe weren't allowed in certain certain terms to, in certain ways to, to to shine, but it was, uh, we kicked too much, uh, kicked ball into the corners, didn't get, so we got turned over uh, way too many times. Um, poor in our, uh, we go away, knock ons. Um, you know, there's like we didn't get enough faith. for the amount of position that we had. We definitely didn't perform. Um, we should have scored. Should have scored, but to be honest, I, I, I straight up we didn't look like scoring. We had we definitely didn't look like scoring um, at the weekend. Um, like we got two kicks from Ben. Uh, he did two, two, two easy enough kicks. Um, the only thing I will say is Kildare scored a try under the post. Which, being honest, anyone that was behind the post that wasn't a try, he slid in and was held up. But um, the referee deemed it, which is his prerogative to, to to deem it a try. But anyone said it was a try, but it wasn't. Um, but that didn't matter because we didn't deserve. And um, you know if. If you look at the try, look at that try that they did score. They, you know, they probably they probably deserved they probably deserved to get a score like that. We didn't. Um, still, like we, our line out was our line out was very good. Um, young Joel Brown, um, he's a nephew of Shannon Brown. Who used to play for Carlo. He's he's come over from Australia um, for a year just traveling, and uh, we were lucky to pick him up. We just picked him up. He's only young lad. He's only twenty years of age. Um, but he's uh, he's really really good in the line out and uh, Eric is enjoying himself and is getting better every game. So I have to say, you know, we were kind of lucky, absolutely lucky to get him. Um, he just arrived, just came over for um, a year out from college and uh, to come over to his uncle and uh, lucky that he had um, he had a really a really really good game at the weekend. Um, I can't like you can't say that anyone really stood out. Um, we were probably very disappointed after 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 the game, um, because we had we had opportunities. We probably went we took a, a kick when we should have probably gone to the corner, and uh, you know gone gone to gone to win that game, but uh, we didn't. We took a kick and then then tried to get back down the field again. So look, I know like we we can play better than what we did, um. This weekend now is going to be a really, really tough weekend. 
we have a tie coming. Look, we got, I mean, we got a bonus point last week. We're in third. Um, this game is a real, uh, a real must win for us. Um, because, uh, I feel it's, it's really kind of a, if you look at the table, it's an eight. Po- uh, I know it sounds mad, but it's a it's an eight point game. Mm. You know, you lose it, we're behind, and it's going to take a, a real struggle to get up and and uh, try and get back, try and get back to win, trying to get back to winning ways again. You know, to be two two losses on the trot, um, which is not which is not easy um, to come back for. But um, look. That's it. We're preparing as much as we can for this weekend. A tie are coming to town. It, it's uh, they're second in the table, and um, look, it's on, it's on the turnaround. It's the first of the of the the second round of games, as we kind of call it. Um, so we really need a win out of this one. Um, a tie are very good side, a super back line. Uh, they gave us uh, a dicking in in a tie the last day, but we were. Probably a little bit off the pace. A lot of us have come back. A lot of the lads have come back from France on on off the tour, and you know. And I think after beating a tie last year in a tie, we kind of maybe weren't as focused as we as should have been on the day. Look, we, we got beaten, but we'll be looking for a little bit of revenge this weekend. So, um, hopefully, <coughs> now that's, it's it's an evening game too. It's at, it's at half seven, so hopefully. Or depend, weather dependent tomorrow, so hopefully the the game will go ahead. Um, our seconds had a had a, a very good win. Kildara came down, and Ferenc Kildara after really getting their act together with their seconds team. I have they hadn't really had seconds in the last while, and um, we went. They came down, and we probably took them for granted a bit. Um, and we were two tries down after uh, I'd say after about fifteen minutes. <laughs> So it was kind of a kick in the arse for us, um, but the lads kept up. They got they got they got stuck in, and and uh, it was a it was a ding that it was a ding dong game. I have to say, look, Kildara were were just really 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 direct, and um, they uh, they just kept sticking to us. And look, the lads got a three point win in the end, so that's. That's put us uh, back into second. We're in second place. We're two points behind uh, a tie, which uh, a tie are our top. Now we beat them in a tie, but um, they've had a lot. Of, they've had their own beaten since. So um, it's going to be a, a do or die match, really, for the top of the table. You know, if we if we beat a tie on on tomorrow evening, we'll uh, we'll go top, and if if they win, they stay top. So. <laughs> It's a simple thing, but uh, a lot of young players there. Uh, James said, like the last day we went down to Kilkenny, we probably had too many young players, and there may be uh, there may be uh, good players individually, but when you don't have there was very little leadership down in Kilkenny. But at this weekend, <coughs> uh, we had a much better led team, and. Uh, uh, they got the dig out in the end and we won by three points so I look after say fair juice the seconds um to all of them um there was an awful lot of, uh, of good performances on the day so I'm not going to mention any any individuals because uh, I think they gave uh, they, they got stuck in as uh, Kildara really stuck it to them they were they were you know a good very very solid big pack and they had a couple of old heads in the back line there that caused havoc just just to Lads have probably played a little bit higher level than the in their past, but they came down and gave us a great game. So hats off to both of them, <coughs> uh, both sides. Uh, the seconds, as I said, was really, really, really good game. Um, heading on to the Utes. Uh, Utes had a kind of a mixed bag or uh, under 13s. Um, they lost to they lost to Nace, but uh, again, it was, a, it was a really, really good game. Uh, probably the uh, score didn't justify the game that was in it, but um, look, we were we were happy that uh, we we're happy with that one. Um, the sixteens had the sixteens had a, they were <laughs> bear with me now. If we get notes on this one, because I'd be shot if I don't get the right the right ones in. Uh, Right, under 16s, uh, Drew against Tullamore. 
uh, in a very, very close, in a very, very good game. Again, they're uh, they're improving. We came another after getting a lot of, they're after recruiting a lot of players in. Um, a lot of guys, some guys haven't even haven't played rugby before, but uh, they have a good buzz. They're nice. They're a nice bunch of a nice bunch of young lads and have a good coaching team. Uh, I think the players of the game were Sean Sean McMahon, Luke Hall, um, David O'Shea, and the man of the match in that one was Jack Dowling. Uh, our under 18s had um, they had a good win actually over Nace. They beat Nace uh, 18 10. The 18s are, are they have really really good numbers. I find they're after they're after um, really getting to bonding together. Um, with the 16s coming up because we don't have 17s this year, so they're a very young side, but um, they're enjoying the rugby and have a they have a really really good panel there. So uh, oh, just kind of wishing them the best of luck going forward with that. Um, Paddy mentioned the eighteen girls. The eighteen girls were well. Look, the the rhinos were well beaten, but in fairness, um, they had young O'Connor. She's uh, she was just back for the game. She was getting one game before she joined the Irish Sevens and was heading to Dubai on uh, last Monday, and uh, she scored five tries. So if you take her out of the out of the picture. Uh, the girls themselves would have, you know, would have been a far closer game. And, and to be honest, I think we probably would have won that game. She's just an outstanding game. She give you give her space. But if you're talking, if you put an Irish international on a on a field of young girls, like it's a a totally different ball game. So the score definitely doesn't justify that match. Uh, they were really, 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 really proud of the girls and the way they performed. Um, and you know, we're struggling to train because of. Uh, some girls, uh, some of the girls are doing the leaving cert, and um, some of them are playing with the ladies as well. Or so, and so they have to train another night. So for a team that's kind of put together at weekends, there's an awful lot of talented girls around. So I have to say, the sixteen or the eighteens, um, really, really well done to them. But the I'd say the game, the two games of the weekend for us were the bees. Had uh, a little blitz against uh, Kildara um, before the senior match on Sunday. That's the all inclusive rugby, and it was fantastic to see um, so many wonderful kids and parents and all the helpers that come out week in week out to help. You know, to, for them, they uh, they clap the players in off the pitch for the warm up, and then clap them and cheer them on on the way back out again. They were look, it, was it was a fantastic time to have for them to be there and. Uh, I have to say, just really, really hats off to uh, everybody that works with the bees. They're just uh, a fantastic group, and our under twelves had a great win up in the Aviva Stadium and the uh, Leinster Munster time. match. There, they had they were on they were on at half time, and uh, just they're a phenomenal bunch. They've already been to a Munster match. They played in Munster. They're heading off. I think I can't believe they're they're on tour more than Ireland. Let's say at this stage, they're uh, they're some group, but. Uh, they had a great win up in I think against Boyne up in up in Aviva on um, on uh, on um, Saturday evening. So well done to them. That's all from Carlo. What's up, Tom? Uh, Paddy Brown's after disappearing on us. I stepped out of the car run. just stretching. The Thames is stretching his legs. If you're listening look, he, to this look, podcast, he's just promoting. Look, he's just promoting. <laughs> but those who are listening and not not watching this, he's he's just. Um, Showing us a nice view of Kilkenny Rugby Club. Look at that. No. Yeah, look at that. A, lo- a live pitch inspection uh, from Fulkstown, oh. County Kilkenny. I think they're just over at the UPMC sign. That was Tom. That was the the location of the of the crime. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I'd say I'd say Wes definitely. Well, I watched I watched the video afterwards, and I was looking at him, and I was going. I'd say he must have just looked and said, "What did I do?" Because yeah, for but such, you do it for yourself. such an intelligent, for such an intelligent player, like who yeah. uh, pro- we probably idolise him in a way. In the, in the fact that, like, I watched him Leinster Juniors, I watched him play with Kenny. I, you know, he's just a, a stalwart of rugby, uh, a really, really good rugby brain. But Jay yeah. had a brain fart that day. He did. He did. Actually, while you mentioned Leinster oh, nice. Juniors, we've actually. Uh, we've actually been awarded Munster versus Leinster in the Interpros this coming at the end of the season. Brilliant. Yeah, big like a nice one. First time you're being into pro game in Kilkenny, so a nice one to get. So uh, we have a something to look forward to at the end of the year. Ah, good. That's, 
that's good stuff. Um, I don't know where Paddy's after disappearing to. Um, I think he's heading off there soon now. Anyway, well, just a quick word, lads, before we let you go uh, about the URC at the moment. Uh, Interpol last weekend, the court lengths are getting the better of Munster. Munster, a lot of attacking flair there, which was nice to see. Um, a typical old Inter Pro game as well, enjoyable to watch. Lens are probably off the mark, very incohesive and just a bit sort of all over the shop as well. Munster were missing an awful lot of players though on the day as well. It was just it was a good match, good proper Inter Pro. Was yeah, yeah. I was up at it, Stephen, and I have to say it was uh, the atmosphere was really really good. Um, you know, again, but it was played in really really good spirit. There was none of this like rubbishy niggles. Yeah, yeah, there's the odd bit of pushing and shoving, but that's just Interpro's. It, it's an intense game. I thought uh, Munster's first try was unbelievable. Um, you know, it just showed a good. bit of flair, which is something they haven't had. Uh, like I know they say that Leinster might not fire, but they did fire. Like it, you know, it just it just was one of those games. Like there was a lot of hard hitting, and um, you know, uh, probably their first time back with all their internationals mm. and. Uh, it just shows you, like, you can throw, <laughs> throw all the players, but if they haven't had match time yeah. together, they're not, you know, it, it, it's, Absolutely. it's hard. It was rusty. It's hard, it's but, it, look, it was a great game. Probably, I, I'd say most of were probably a bit disappointed in the fact they probably could have won it. Uh, yeah. It was it's definitely a lot, there was a lot more, a lot happier uh, group of Munster supporters around than, uh, than Lenter supporters. Um, yeah. You know, uh, well, it was, I do think it's as well, I suppose. Leinster will probably expect more, and the support will probably expect more. But the gap is closing a bit, and you know, and it's well good. we've always said that it doesn't matter. And Connacht are doing the same. Hopefully, like it'll be a good game between Connacht and Leinster this weekend. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say in that one is I am really pissed that Frawley is not starting ten. I can't. Yeah, I, 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 I think there's, it's there's a lot of talk about that. Tom. Brain dead to have Harry Byrne coming back in there. I'm sorry, now who's listening? No. that's just my opinion. No. I think Kieran Frawley should have always been left at out half. He's it's watched him since well, he's, he's young. He's not even on the squad. He's not even going to Galway. Um, who? I don't know. Frawley's I not on the team. Frawley's Is he? Yeah, he's back. Yeah. He's back. I don't, under, I, I don't understand this thing of he ha, comes out, Cheers, he comes that. off the comes off the bench. Oh, he is, yeah, plays really. If you watch, if you watch, like I watch the game again, and I always kind of do. Uh, he's on the back of me. Fifteen. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I missed that because I wouldn't be looking there, Tom. That's yeah, why I'm surprised. Like when you see him and the way he played, and if you watch, uh, I was watching highlights of it and. A little bit on him and taking the ball to the line. He's very sexy-ish with his with his, yep. uh, with his. He's a huge man, big man there at ten. I cannot understand why they change that and throw him back in for keep shoving him around because it's just oh. leaving him in the one position. He's a, he's an awesome player. Is he going to get it? Like I mean, they're probably looking at the two yeah, burns so, yeah. and then Sam Pendergast. You know, I mean. Is it back then to the effect? Is it back to the days of Carberry, Ian, Ian, Ian Madigan, and these guys where you have a superstar, you have a really good rugby player, but he's not going to really get the look in they deserve there? I think that's what's going to happen to the lad. And I think for his own long term prospects, Leinster need to find a home for him, be it in not the centre or full back, because he's not going to get that opportunity at 10 long term. But he wasn't there last year, wasn't he? I think he's ridiculous. He's a, he's twenty six going on twenty seven. He's not that young anymore. His t- mm. like his time is running out. They keep shoveling him from out half centre full back. <laughs> like he's a utility player, but he's mm. also a superb uh, ten. Are, are they looking he just at him? Hasn't had the ten same amount of no. time at ten. Are, are, they 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 looking looking the camp, are they looking at him for year next week? I don't no, but uh, like are they putting Frawley back there to bring him back to ten next week in in lieu of um uh, uh, what's Ross Byrne being injured for the European match? Well, why would you start him at full back and why would you yeah. start him at ten? I mean, yeah. if you're like, going to play, it, if Ross Byrne is not available next weekend, I wouldn't be changing. To Har- Harry Byrne is not the same player. I don't care what anyone says. He's not no, definitely. To me, he's not the same player. Do we have any is, fullbacks is, that we could have sent to Galway instead of Frawley? Larmer. Yeah, Larmer. Jimmy O'Brien's fullback. Jimmy O'Brien, yeah. 
he's been rested. Larmer, was Larmer injured last weekend? No, he no, played. He scored he the in the corner. Yeah, he didn't get injured. He wasn't. Ross got injured, all right. But his and Zebo should have tackled him for that try as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, like, I agree with you, Tom, wholeheartedly. Mm. I think Frawley's fantastic, but I don't know. We may ask, we may get up, we may get what's his name to get on to Sean O'Brien and ask him what the talk process was behind the Frawley thing. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I just don't understand. Because I say they've watched him since he was like, I watched him play our Leinster final against us uh, at under 18s, and he was just a different class. He was playing Scaries, he was playing for Scaries mm-hmm. AIL team. Uh, when he was under 18, when he, well, when he was 18, like, yeah. is there. he was just a different class, he just, uh, you know, his patience, he could sit back way off the, you know, sit back from the pocket, just relax, fling, uh, take the ball to the line, and fling a pass, skip past two people, no problem, and that was at 18, and then he went in into Leinster's, had a couple again, then it's been kind of moved from position to position to position. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's um, just me, I, I, I like him as a player. He's a nice guy too. Yeah, we'll see what happens the weekend. It's a very, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'd be a bit worried about Connacht and about this game this weekend. The Leinster have sort of held back a lot of big fellas. I thought there might be a bit of continuity from last week and they build it up a bit towards this match next weekend. But sure, we'll see. We'll see what the score is like after the Connacht match. You know, Munster improving. I think it was a great performance by Munster last weekend. Yeah, that cap is definitely closing chains, yeah. as you said there. You know, and I think we all were saying last year, Munster missing a big man. They're after getting 130 kg IQ prop in now, so I think it's a, I think that's a it's a great signing, and um, I think RG Snyman is what I'd be saying now is I cut the losses and terminate Kuro Faker's contract because he's going to be no good to you between now and the end of the season. Let him yeah. go and see if you can bring someone else in between now and the end of the year as well. But I, I, I think both time, this is it, yeah. Both Leinster and Munster are only going to improve. I think it's going to be a good year for Leinster and Munster. Yeah. Um, and what's the crack with John Ryan? They're like it was all the hull of a loon that got John back, but he doesn't seem to be Well, I think he can only do better than Stephen Archer. Stephen Archer's been a great old servant for Munster. Yeah, uh, he but is he's, a penalty machine, like he's been a liability the last year. He He's was, a penalty he, machine. He I made a, a big boo boo there on on Saturday night, picking a yeah. taking a pick and go. Yeah, on his own. Yeah, like, yeah but then Tom Hearn came in the side and actually opened the whole gate up there. If you look at that rock, as well. But I just think I think Stephen Archer, great player. He was lucky with Ireland. He never played for Ireland. I think after a game away to Italy, where he got absolutely inhaled in the scrum. I think Greg Feek was the scrum coach at the time and more or less said, you'll never play for Ireland again, mate. But I just think he is an absolute liability for Munster this year. Yeah, I um, totally agree. John, I agree. John Ryan, they're probably managing him. I don't know what the story is there, but I just think to get Ali Yeager in now is absolutely massive. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. that was some lovely backs played the weekend as well with Munster. It's real proper. Yeah, probably. Uh, as well. Crowley's really starting to um Crowley's really starting to uh to shine. You know, he's, yeah. he's uh, and I tell you, Crowley, you could hit the f- you could hit him all day and he'll stay getting back up. Yeah. He's a hard he's, he's, tough. He is tough. You, he, he's very physical. He doesn't look big, yeah. but he's a bit he's a big chap, he's a solid chap. Yeah. He's very, very solid you know and he's and he's gutsy and he has a real determination and I was watching a couple of clips. Of him just talking in the dressing room and um, just on um, one of the things on YouTube and you know he, he's uh, mm. he's very precise he he speaks well you know he's he's for he, he he's they say uh, an old head on young shoulders when he talks you know and for people actually listen so you know I think he's I think he's a a, a definite but has definite potential to be. Absolutely. We're looking at Munster, like, I mean, Munster now, they have their pack fairly well sorted. They have a very good 9 10, 12 13. I mean, I think, I think, uh, Manchin Fritch is a class rugby player, the way he offslowed. I think the only thing that Munster is really missing now is a big winger that can actually 
yeah. kind of break tackles, take the ball into contact and be a big sort carrier. Of a thin, for low, sort of a big, sort of a, he- yeah, a heavier that sort of guy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Craig Casey wasn't great now at the weekend. Um, you know, he was shepherd hooked fairly early on, but Conor Murray really showed his experience when he came on. Yeah, he's still, yeah, still going to be important to Ireland yeah. the Munster in the long run or the yeah. short term. Yeah. When he came on, there's a lot of a lot of things changed. Munster steadied up a bit as well under him. I don't know, Craig just had an off day. He needs to slow his game down a little bit, I think, Casey, and just become a little bit more little bit more Conor Murray like. Think think his way around. Yeah, no, look, I I think it's going to be a good weekend of rugby. Uh, with the, um, you know, the provinces. The problems uh, looking forward to it actually because uh, really looking forward to Leinster and Connor. Like that's always a it's a different prospect for Leinster going into uh, going over to the west. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to it. It's sold out, I think, in in uh, Musgrave Park as well for yep, the Glasgow match. So that that has potential to be a, a, another ding dong. Uh, yep. I can't remember who Ulster are playing. Yep. Uh, well, Glasgow are fast and furious, so they good old. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking forward to the weekend's rugby. I hopefully yeah. uh, look forward to Carlos' rugby as well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's your neighbours, your short trip. Uh, uh, if it is, it'll be a, a nice few um, little uh, Lucas heads there on uh, Saturday night. <laughs> a few club oranges. <laughs> <laughs> a, few club, a few club oranges, yeah. A few Christmas parties this weekend. Is this your last sort of game before Christmas, is it? This is, yeah. this is the last league match before Christmas. We have... Um, with the Southeast final on the 30th, um, oh. against Dennis Garthy. Um, that's at home. Actually, there's there, I think that we have three games, three or four games that weekend, or that that's that day, uh, on the 30th. There's the our first are playing, um, Dennis Garthy, and it hasn't been decided yet, but there is a chance that our seconds will be playing Wexford. Um, Wexford in that's their J Wexford J ones in the J two J two Southeast Cup final, and okay. we're also host, we're also hosting the under eighteen Southeast um, <coughs> Cup final as well. So good yeah. days rugby, lads. The very best of luck this weekend. Enjoy the rugby. The best of luck to your own teams, of course. And uh, yeah. Paddy Brown was with us there earlier on as well. These are all in action. Uh, have a good weekend. Hopefully, you don't get frosted off. And we get to chat about more rugby next week. That's it. Tom Crowley, James Blanchfield, and Paddy Brown and myself. Chat to you next week. Take it easy.